In an ancient city along the Syrian coast, a clay tablet was found. It was a response to a king's plea for aid, and it was inscribed with the words, My father, behold, the enemy ships came. My cities were burned, and they did evil in my country. All of my troops and chariots are in the land of Hati, and all of my ships are in the land of Luka. The country is abandoned to itself. You see, the fate of the city is one that is actually shared across the Bronze Age world. The enemies that picked it are that of the Sea People, an unknown group who would become the scourge of the Mycenaean civilization before eventually wiping it off the map. But that does bring up a question. Why? Why when the other kingdoms could move inland, or throw back the Sea Raiders, did the Mycenaeans collapse? Well, to understand that, we must take a look at the lifestyle, trade, and geopolitics of the Mycenaean kingdoms. You see, when people talk of the Mycenaean civilization, they often refer to the city of Mycenae, where the term Mycenaean comes from. The city is one of the oldest in the Mycenaean world, dating back to as early as 2100 BCE, although experts have also believed that the area may have already been populated before then. And so, at its height, this massive city extended up to 30,000 square meters. I am definitely reading that wrong. 30,000 square meters is the size of some water parks and industrial plants. You know what, I'm sure everything will make sense as we keep going. Other quote-unquote great cities, such as Athens, Thebes, and even Sparta, then known as Menelaon, were also founded in the Mycenaean Age, although they would probably reach their greatest height around the Age of Antiquity, or the Classical Age Greece. There are also lesser known, but still important kingdoms, centered around the cities of Pylos, Ilicus, and Orchomenos, cities that are now reduced to rubble today. The last Mycenaean kingdom worth mentioning is on the island of Crete. The city of Knossos was founded much earlier by the Minoan civilization, who we will get to in a minute, and it was centered around the island of Crete, which seemed to dominate the political landscape there. Eventually it was burned, which again, we will get to in a minute, but while it still existed, it was the supreme authority on the island. Now, there's a whole scholarly debate on where the Mycenaeans got started. Some people say 1700 BCE, some people say 2000 BCE, hell, there's someone that even said 2500 BCE, although that was stated in one JSTOR article, so I'm not really going to credit that. I'm not here to give my own scholarly opinion, because I'm pretty sure the genuine experts will figure it out sooner than I will, but the Mycenaean Golden Age does seem to coincide with the fall of the Minoan civilization sometime around 1500 BCE, so at least we have that to go off of. Now, the Minoans are like a whole nother bag of confusing that I'm not going to go over, but what I can say is that they were stationed on the island of Crete and they were sort of like the proto-Mycenaeans. I say this not because they eventually became the Mycenaeans, they did not, but because you can draw many similarities between their two civilizations, although the Mycenaeans were on a much grander scale and they came after the Minoans. The Minoan civilization was centered around the city of Knossos, which even extended to some settlements on the Greek mainland, although I am skipping a lot of their history for the sake of brevity. And for that sake, I'm going to limit their history down to the fact that the fall of the Minoans and the takeover of the Mycenaeans on Crete in 1500s BCE is highly debated. Some say the civilization was weakened by a volcanic eruption, some say it was food shortage, others say that it was a brutal Mycenaean conquest, and however it happened, it is true that a combination of factors led to the fall of the Minoan civilization, and Crete was assimilated into Mycenaean rule. Knossos would be destroyed in 1450 BCE by unknown factors, although most blame it on the Mycenaeans, like why not blame everything on the Mycenaeans, but you get the point. I'm trying not to go too long and sound like I'm rambling, so let's wrap this up by saying that the last part of the Mycenaean world worth taking any note about are the cities along the Anatolian coast. These cities weren't necessarily Mycenaean, as they were populated by Anatolians and had very different cultural aspects, but they did play an important role in the Greek world. A good example of this is the possibly real and possibly mythical Trojan War. While most people believe Troy to have been a real city, with the remains being found on the Anatolian coast, the war is a different story. You can watch other videos on how the war went down, or whether it did or not, but it serves as an example to show the big part these cities had with the Mycenaeans and how they affected the world around them. 
When taking a first look at the Bronze Age worlds, the Mycenaeans don't seem to actually have much going for them. Egypt produced massive amount of quantities of food and gold, they were also the strongest military power. The Hittites controlled pretty much all of the Bronze Age production in the world, with copper mines on the island of Cyprus and tin facilities in the Taurus Mountains. This made their empire very rich from the land trade routes they controlled, and the Assyrians were perfectly placed to act as a middleman in the trade of goods between the East and the West. So, that leaves the questions. What did the Mycenaeans actually have? As it actually turns out, our favorite Greek friends were not completely useless, and actually had three advantages over the rest of the Bronze Age world. Their seafaring navy, their industrial prowess, and of course, their expert craftsmanship. First of all, the Mycenaeans were excellent merchants. While the overland trade routes were long and prone to be plundered, there was no force in the Mediterranean that could stand up to the Mycenaean navies. You know, until the sea people, but we'll get to that in a minute. This made overseas trade faster, safer, and more profitable, making the Greek kingdoms extremely rich. Another benefit to the Mycenaean kingdoms was their industrial complex. While Egypt, Assyria, and the Hittites would export their natural resources, it often fell upon the Mycenaeans to actually turn it into fixed goods. The inner cities and palaces also doubled as workshops, and they imported goods such as tin, copper, bronze, wood, ivory, and glass, and they used them to turn them into processed goods and commodities to sell to other kingdoms. And all of this not to mention their expert craftsmanship. Every Bronze Age kingdom had craftsmen and potters of their own, but they couldn't compare to the Mycenaeans. Greek swords were the envy of the Bronze Age world, their ships were the fastest, and their armor was the most sturdy. Armies from across the world would equip themselves with Mycenaean war tools to fight. Well, one might so reasonably ask, why didn't other kingdoms copy them? What made Greek society so unique? And for that, we should probably take a closer look at the social caste of the kingdoms in question. The Mycenaeans seem to have run off of what's called a command economy. Instead of local markets, the government would acquire the raw materials and labor from the population necessary to fuel the specific industries. The goods produced would be sold to other kingdoms in question, while money, food, and other resources that were left would be redistributed to the people. One might think this would naturally break down as it shouldn't be possible to provide for everyone in the kingdom, but many records have been found which catalog every craftsman, household, and all their needs. It was a top-down system with census takers, scribes, and local officials taking stock of what they had and what needed to be redistributed to the people. The amount of organization this is is absolutely insane, especially compared to how the world would be after the Bronze Age collapse. We won't see many societies with a system like this for a long time in history. This, of course, ties into another big aspect of Mycenaean society, religion. I'm not going to go into the specific pantheons present at the time, but I will discuss how important the religious institutions were across the Greek world. The religious temples played a huge part in acquiring the resources for the government. There is evidence to show that many of the record keepers actually worked for the temples and religious institutions rather than for the government itself. There is also evidence to show that the temples and government didn't just take the people's resources, but rather paid for them at a discount price. Some of the money for these transactions actually came from the temples themselves along with private merchants. And so in the face of this, what did the scholarly community do? Label the kingdoms as having quote, temple economies. This however glosses over the fact that the temples weren't the only ones providing resources to the government. It was a very loose and indirect system. Private merchants would also play a huge role in buying resources at a discount and selling them to the government as compensation. There is a lot more to the Mycenaean economies, but seeing as it's getting complicated enough already, I'm going to leave it at this. It is a very complicated system, and while it worked amazingly at the times of peace and war, when trade eventually broke down, and the pieces began to fall away, the entire system collapsed, leaving the people of the Mycenaean civilizations poor and destitute. Unfortunately for us, there is no really clear-cut timeline of events for these Greek kingdoms. Of course, there are myths about kings and wars, and maybe some inscriptions, but scholars find it very difficult to justify writing these off as actual history. Instead, I decided to give you guys a look at the Mycenaean world as a whole in this video. But now, we will take a look at the one event in Mycenaean history that we can accurately say took place. The Collapse. Now, you, the viewer, are probably like, okay, hold on, you gave us no timeline, no events, and now you're just skipping to the collapse? And, uh, yeah, I am. 
a lot of what we know about the kingdoms around this time comes from archaeology and scattered historical records. The only time we have a definitive, history-changing event is the collapse of the Bronze Age itself. And so, on with the show. It's sometime around the 12th century BCE. We open our story on a merchant ship traveling the open sea. The Greek navies have been tied up fighting a great war, and the waters have become a lot more dangerous. Suddenly, another ship appears in the distance. Raiders. The captain orders the crew to row faster, but they aren't fast enough, and soon the raiders board the ship. Now, it's the next day, and the postmaster is furious. None of the scheduled ships have arrived on time, if at all. He's worried they will never return. These merchants are essential, as recently there has been a shortage of food, bronze, and manpower. Whether this is actually caused by war or something else at this time is unknown, but we'll just keep moving with the story. Suddenly, ships appear on the horizon. At first, the postmaster hopes they are merchants, delayed due to complications, but he soon realizes they are. By the end of the day, the great city is nothing but rubble and ash. Of course, this is just a made-up example, although many real settlements shared the fate of this fictional city. These mysterious sea raiders of unknown origin pillaged up and down the coast of Greece, sapping the already herding kingdoms of all the strength they had left. It is possible that these cities were weakened by some great war, such as the famous Trojan War, which may or may not have taken place, but what is clear is that the complicated economic system began to falter, and it wasn't long before it completely fell apart. Mycenaean Greece is often forgot about in history, and honestly, it's really sad to see. The cultural impact still lasts to this day. If you're in the United States, most high school students are made to read the Iliad or the Odyssey, two books focused on the mythical Trojan War. Some of the most notable and famous cities in history, Athens, Sparta, and Thebes, are all set in the foundations of the Bronze Age world, and these are only a few examples of how the Mycenaean world appears in our modern culture today, but has way more of an impact than you may think. I implore you to do your own research into the subject if you are interested. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you have not done so. My sources are in the description, and please leave a comment telling me what I should cover next. This is the History Broadcast, until next time.